Good afternoon and welcome everybody. This would be the Jeff Cameron Show right here on 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV on a Live Nations Friday Lucy Goosey edition of the program. The uh, efforts of transparency here, I'll tell everybody this was recorded today. Uh, some loose ends to tie up on a Friday before Tom flies back to do you, do you to New York, if I could speak. I was about to cough at the same time I was trying to speak. Anyhow, uh, we wanted to get something in on the same day as the show. So this is uh, same day, just happens to be a couple hours before the show would start. And uh, we've got a lot to get to. It should be fun. Tom broadcasting from his hotel room, me from my living room, doesn't change the fact that the Pittsburgh Pirates won on opening day. That's what we lead with today on a Libations Friday. We'll spend a good 15 minutes on the Buckos and then go into some of these other nondescript stories that you guys want to get to. I kid. I kid. Hey, first of all, let me say this because sometimes I forget uh, to, to remember to thank everybody. That was awesome yesterday, Tom. I know you had a good time. I sure did, too. We went over to Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. We do it, try to do it almost annually. Sometimes we miss a year, just circumstances. But um, to see Bill over at the corner pocket and all of our friends that came out yesterday to watch baseball, to see the Vegas wall and all of its magnificence, I have to say, as I looked around, that's why you have a Vegas wall. It was picture perfect yesterday. It's a slow build that culminates by the end of the day into the evening with Florida State on one television and nothing but Major League Baseball on the other Others for a good long while. And then the NCAA tournament starts. The next day, I know I'm watching Arizona Clemson, which turns out to be an awesome game, as did a lot of them last night. And pretty soon before the night's up, I've got North Carolina, Alabama, Major League Baseball, hockey, the NBA, the Knowles, Upset City. This is so much fun. It was perfect. Thanks to everybody who came out and enjoyed opening day with us at Corner Pocket. It was uh, it was really nice. Um, they've got it down too. You know, the technology for TV changing has has come up in the world. It's basically like a smart app on a tablet. He walks around, so it's like if you need something, it's like boop boop, and it switches over. Um, once we got into that four o'clock hour yesterday, all the TVs had baseball on, and that's the the weird thing about MLB and the way they do opening day. Unfortunately, is that used to be like one fifteen, you would be loaded up with games. And I don't know if it's because they're trying to get people to take an early half day from work, you know, things like that. But, you know, it was a slow start. We did have Angels and Orioles for an hour. That was it. Nothing else. That was an ass kicking. Mike Trout hit a home run and then the Orioles did the rest. That's the life of Mike Trout. (laughs) His entirety of his career. I'm going to hit home runs, be really good, nearly catch a ball out in center field that very few humans could get to and practically dislocate my shoulder going over the wall to make said catch, try to anyhow, come up just short, but remind everybody of how awesome I am, only to watch my team get their head kicked in yet again. That is his yeah. existence. That sounds about right. Uh, and and the great part was, as you guys were in extra innings, by the time we were flipping over to the Florida State baseball game, and it was top left or bottom left of the uh, the Vegas wall, you know, Cam Leiter already had like five strikeouts. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And that game was taking on a life of its own, and and that was great. But yeah, it was great to see baseball everywhere. It just it lets you know the seasons are changing, and we've already had our last weekend without baseball until late October. So if you just like consistency, that is one thing that baseball will deliver to you. You know, really quickly, uh, Florida State won last night in baseball. We didn't. We mentioned we were watching the game at the corner pocket, but they did win uh, eight to three over Louisville, and what was a fun game to watch. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I can't figure out this four state baseball team other than I know they're going to hit and I know they're going to hit every night. I mean, yeah, at some point somebody's going to shove against this team and we're going to be stunned. Somebody's going to beat this team and they're going to score one run or something, but it's, uh, it's really remarkable. I know we had a game earlier this year. We won one to nothing, but it's just, uh, obviously that was an anomaly. This team is a murderer's row. And you can hold Florida State down for a while, but you just watch the quality of these ABs. How big of a pickup was it for Florida State to get Marco Dingus? I mean, look at what the, what he's putting together right now, Tom. And obviously, he was the catalyst last night with that grand slam. Um, it's just it's interesting to kind of watch that kid play. You realize there's real consistent power to all fields for him. 
he can hit to all fields. And I just, I, I don't know. You know, we knew Cam was going to be a beast this year. We always know that Tibbs just drops the barrel of the bat on the ball and it's got a fluid swing. We had an idea about some of the other guys, but man, Dingus has been really quality. And so Florida State gets another win. They go to 21 and three. It's an ACC win. It's a nice bounce back in conference. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, it, it's riding the wrongs of last week. Uh, it, it's very frustrating. That one's still going to stick in our craw, I think, when it comes down to looking at seeding. Because I think Florida State is going to be in that conversation for seeding when it all is said and done. Uh, you know, time was for forever in a day they would only see the top eight and then they would go regional and it made no sense through 16. But now they see it all the way one through 16. And uh, I'm starting to feel comfortable with the idea that as we get to Memorial Day, and that's typically when the selection show historically has happened for NCAA baseball. They talk about host sites. We're getting in that place. I, I didn't think we would be here so soon uh, that we could reasonably discuss Florida State hosting a regional. I think we're there. This lineup is going to do what it does, night in, night out. The question is, what does the pitching do? Nice bounce back effort from Cam going five and two thirds. Twelve strikeouts um, is uh, will hurt your feelings if you're Louisville in five and two thirds. <laughs> that is correct. You know, at at some point, like I, I want to see that breakthrough performance like Arnold has had several times, where he gives you length in addition to the swing and miss stuff. But this is way better than last week. And then Joe Charles, obviously, Huge. nice player, nice nice player. The three inning save that that's very nice from Joe. If you start getting consistency in in that realm. Two or three guys that can go long for you out of the bullpen. He told you, Link did. They lengthened like a half dozen guys to 70 yeah. plus pitches. You get two or three of those to help bridge for a Friday night or a Thursday in this case into a Sunday, pitch twice in a weekend. That's all you really need because this lineup is going to provide you, I would think, six, eight runs a game. Well, let's talk about something that's important here because we saw it the other night against Florida and we saw it in this game last night and you just alluded to it. The, the young man last night responsible for it was Joe Charles. But think about what it means on the heels of the Clemson debacle where your bullpen couldn't get anybody out and you had those two games won. Now, I'm going to say something that if I'm a Clemson fan, I'm going to push back on. It's part of my larger point. Clemson, no doubt, um, the number one RPI team in the country right now, in large part because of uh, they're very, very good, but also the sweep of Florida State, who's number two in the RPI. So that, that certainly helps. But in the back of Clemson's mind, if you're being a realist, if you're being fair-minded, you know that that was a magic trick. What happened in those two games to help you win the series is really, really highly unlikely to ever happen again. Maybe in the history of being a Clemson fan, it would never happen again. You're not going to come back from 11-2 to two if you play Florida State again in the sixth inning. It's not happening. And you're not going to come back from 8-1 to one in the ninth. You're not going to. You will not. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It will not happen. Florida State was better than Clemson for two of the three games. I would say it's uh it's akin to a conversation in Rocky. We usually pick the different line, but uh it's it's in Rocky too. And his trainer, Apollo's trainer, goes, I saw you beat that man yeah. like I've <laughs> never seen any man take a he beating. Kept coming. He kept and coming. He kept coming back at you. Yeah. Let it go. He's all wrong <laughs> for us, baby. Yeah. Right. You think about you get run ruled. You're getting you go up four to nothing. You get run ruled. You got to yeah. roll back out there an hour later. And I saw you take that beating, and you kept coming back. Man. And then in game two, you lose an absolutely heartbreaking fashion. It's a miracle. It's an effing miracle. I saw you take a beating like I've never <laughs> seen before. And you kept and you kept coming back. And then you get swept. And then on Tuesday against Florida, again I won't oh. do it again. But then you just hit your way to run ruling the Gators. This is um. Well, They're he, impressive, and and Link Jarrett has he broke character a little bit. Very serious guy, but he breaks character on Tuesday, and he says that's as impressive a response as I've ever seen. He knows they got a little something to him. It's not just the bravado, and they do have a lot of that. Din just took 72 seconds on his little home run shot, but they've got the grit to respond well, to whatever the hell's thrown at him, and that for that to happen so quickly is very impressive. Well, and to my point. And, I, I, and this is where I was going with this. You're right to take it where you took it, which is the toughness angle. That is well, that is factual. You are spot on. 
I'm speaking specifically of incidents with the bullpen. So it's the bullpen that's the culprit at Clemson that cost you the games and really in epic fashion. Agreed upon by all, we witnessed it. I'm going to argue that they handled the situation poorly, but it was an obscene situation that frankly should be banned. Uh, It's also uh, obnoxious and it's not like anything they're ever going to see again. They'll never face that nonsense again with the incessant earworm that is that stupid song played repeatedly 26 times in one inning. Um, Against Florida, they go out and score three, Tom, and immediately give up three. They immediately give up three. There has to be a sense of here we go again. It's a bullpen night on a Tuesday. We're going to have to play a bunch of guys tonight, all of whom couldn't get anybody out. Every one of them who, when asked to get Clemson out, sucked. And so you're thinking, here we go again. And what do they do? They come in against Florida and dominate, dominate that team in Jacksonville, which is a pro Florida crowd. And they give up a grand total of three hits, okay? Now, what happens last night? The bases are loaded for Louisville in the seventh with nobody out. This isn't just, oh, Joe Charles came in and pitched three innings. Joe Charles was asked to come in with the bases loaded and nobody out in the game in the balance. And you just saw them fail miserably in this situation. Same scenario. Offense is awesome. Grand slam. Big lead. Here we go. Let's make sure we can just close it out. Oh, damn. Bases loaded. Nobody out. We got to go to the pin. Oh, this is going to hurt. Let's hope we can win eight to seven. No. Joe Charles shoves. They get out of that bases loaded jam with nobody out without even giving up a single run and go on to dominate the rest of the game. I'm going to argue if this continues, and I think it's going to be an easy argument, it's to your point about the stuff. I'm going to argue that the Clemson game is a complete outlier indicative of nothing, that the only thing you're going to be able to take away from that Clemson series is the repeated awesome at-bats that Florida State's offense had, because that's going to remain true the rest of the year. But the pitching is not what it represented on the road at Clemson and a child's bandbox of a ballpark with the wind blowing out and a ridiculous baseball op hitting a button over and over again. So I'm looking, doing quick math on the bullpen performance the last two games. And if I'm doing it right, it's a 10 and a third innings of yeah, shutout. Yeah, because they baseball. played so many bullpen innings in the Florida game, yeah. Right, right, because you had seven in that game. There were only eight necessary because, you know, we run-ruled them. We run-ruled uh, their ass, yes. Uh, it's 10 and a third. I think it's uh, three hits, four walks, you know, 14 strikeouts. I might be off by one or two in some of those metrics, but it's 10 and a third of shutout baseball, and you're not walking the world. You're not hitting batters. It is. It has been something remarkable, and, you know, it, I, I would agree with you. The Clemson thing, it looks like an outlier for right now. It's just a matter of – how some of these younger players show consistency. Like, you know, if Abraham can be the good version of himself, then you're going to be fine. But are we going to endorse some ups and downs from younger players? I think that's still fair. Oh, I'm not telling you they're not going to get hit at any point this year. It's not like they've got, you know, uh, the best relievers in Major League Baseball rolling out of the pen here. I I, I got you. But I just think that what they were at Clemson was, was such an abomination that one could have extrapolated from that at that moment. Oh, God. What, oh, this is, oh, man. Okay. Yeah, we've taken a big step forward, but we still have some real pains that we're going to have to deal with for the rest of the year. And thank God our offense is good. We'll club our way to a nice season. Maybe not, man. Maybe not. Maybe our offense is really, really good, and we're going to beat the bejesus out of a lot of people because our bullpen's pretty decent, and that that was a wild outlier at Clemson. Again, centering around weird circumstances, circumstances that had the wind gusting out 380 to center field and an ass. Oh, I almost called. Yeah, I almost said what I said. It's some jackass up in the in the baseball ops hitting the button. I'm telling you, I, I'm excited. I'm just going to put it that way. They'll give up some runs. They'll have some bad days. It's college baseball. I, I, I'm not trying to tell you that, again, it's it's a dominant group coming out of the pen, but it's all guys that have stuff. 
And you've repeatedly said that, and you're right. And if, if you want further proof for people who are kind of skeptical, go back to what they did prior to the Clemson series. The bullpen yeah. was great prior to the Clemson series. So, again. Yeah, this is – and they're going to cultivate more options as they go. This The reason I'm talking about the stuff so much is – up there where where um, I'm living in New York, you know, there's a lot of spring training baseball on, like all of the time, yeah. um, and and people care greatly about it. And I'm looking at some of these younger arms in our system and the Yankees system and whoever they're playing on that given day, and I'm not seeing a difference between their sliders and our sliders at Florida State or their changeups and our changeups and their breaking balls. Now, fastball is a little different. And, you know, the, the consistency of that, the velocity, the velo of that is, is a little location. bit different. They, they all located the bigs. And it's they great. locate well. But I'm just I'm just talking about raw ingredients. Mm-hmm. Link has done it like quickly. And Mike Posey has done it quickly. They brought in a lot of raw ingredients. And, and those kids are going to figure it out over a period of time because eventually they want to be starters for us when Cam's gone and Jamie's gone. And, and uh, so we'll see. Um who those answers are going to be, but they've got numbers to throw at the problem. If this was a football analogy, I would look at the bullpen as like our defensive back room. You've got a lot of dudes that you could yeah. throw at the problem. I don't know who's going to be your number one guy, not named Azaria, not named Fentrell, but you've got options galore. And I think they're going to, I, I think they'll you know, probably three or four dudes will emerge by the end of the season. The good news is the consistency of the offense is something that's going to be great to watch. And the product itself has gotten better. We haven't had that conversation about college baseball so much as, as base, Major League Baseball. The pitch clock helps. It helps the sport up and down, whether you're looking at professional or NIL, quote-unquote professional with college. It moves. The game moves along. There's a pace to it. I'm going to say this because we're going to spend the bulk of the rest of the hour discussing Florida State football Fret not, everybody, but a lot happened yesterday. NCAA six, Sweet 16 games, obviously, Florida State baseball and, and, and all, and, and Major League Baseball and all that. But to your point, this happened a year ago, and it brought people back to the game. I'm a fan of a sports fan. I'm a, I'm a proponent of uh, more interesting sports all around us at all times. It's good for my job. It's also, as somebody who loves competition and loves sports, I want as many of these things on the landscape to get us through the year. I mean, listen, a lot of us are biding time until football comes back around. That's what a lot of people do. They they have to kind of divert their interest and find something they can latch on to uh, for a little while to get them through till football. Others of us are a little bit more passionate about those other sports. You and I both love hockey. You especially love, love hockey. Um, I like the NBA these days. Uh, I watch a ton of Major League Baseball and I'm passionate about it. So I'm not biding time. I'm investing. But the product in baseball is so much better on both levels, to your point, that last year's experiment was probably the most successful rules changes experiment I've ever seen in any sport. Yesterday, Tom, we had games in Major League Baseball, two hours, three minutes, two hours, 12 minutes, two hours, 23 minutes, Two hours, 29 minutes, two hours, 16 minutes. You had an Astros-Yankees game loaded with great hitters that lasted two hours and 40 minutes. The Diamondbacks, Tom, scored two touchdowns in one inning, 14 runs, and it didn't break three hours. They scored 14 runs in a single inning, and that game did not last three hours. Basically, the Pirates game had to go 12 innings with bases stacked left and right down the last three innings to have a game go over. Like, this is a revolution in baseball. You can comfortably say to somebody who's lukewarm about sitting down with you, bellying up to the bar, if you will, to watch a baseball game or actually go into the park – and saying, hey, look, John, let's go watch a baseball game. Eh, I haven't gone in years. It's slow. It's boring. No, it ain't slow, John, at all. It's not slow. We'll probably be in and out of there in two hours. And you're not crazy. Like, you can say that, and it's not absurd to say that. Well, and it helps with college that that it's doing the same thing. College will take longer. There's more pitching changes. There's not a yeah, rule about, yeah. Yeah. you know, a batter's minimum of three, all that kind of stuff. So Sully certainly abuses that privilege, doesn't he? Um, hmm. But But still – the game's pace, the game's pace is, is just so much better. And I like that those things are all intersecting, that they're all merging into one highway 
which is the return of Florida State baseball to prominence. It's it's just great to have, as, as you're saying, especially midweek, looking for an option on a Tuesday night. Hey, yeah. I'm fired up that we're playing Stetson. Like, this is – it's nice. This is a nice <laughs> place to be. Well, and for all the people that kind of – had a stretch because this the, the the game was bad, the team was bad, and they had kind of grown weary at the end of Mike's uh, Martin's career, and then on to Mike Jr. and then we had some you know just rough rough edges, really rough times, and then Link's first year was a disaster. Um, it's cool to see those folks who had kind of been I don't want to say turned off, but just frustrated by and eventually disinterested by Florida State baseball to see them out the corner pocket last night come out and really kind of support Florida state baseball. It's interesting. I, I talked with several people They're like, man, this team, huh? This team here. <laughs> You're like, yeah, you like them. Don't you? I do. I, I find myself tuning in all the time now. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, a team that hits a gazillion home runs will do that to you. I think, but yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty cool. And you're right. I think the byproduct of the game being better helps as well. Chef Cameron show 93, three real talk radio War chant TV. We'll get into Florida state football next. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. (laughs) At M&L Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At M&L Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name M&L Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393, or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. M&L Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Oh, my God, what happened to you? You're walking so crooked. Well, I was walking my alligator, and I tripped on a cypress knee, and I spilled my margarita. Oh, my gosh, your margarita. I blew my back completely out. I had to ride the alligator home. I don't know what to do. My back's killing me. You're such a poor man. You should know you should go to Finn Chiropractic. Really? You can go to their website and book an appointment and get you in as soon as possible. Go to FinnChiro.com, F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. You mean 24 hours a day I can make my appointment online and pay for it? Yep, right on their website. Wow, and it's discounted? Yeah. All right, that's what Florida man needs to do. No lines, no waiting. Visit FenCairo.com to book your next appointment with a discount. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. That's F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. It's Fen Chiropractic, where the chiropractors love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hold my beer. I'm going to Fen Chiropractic. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options, making these everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotSpring.com. That's TallahasseeHotSpring.com. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. There were some throws that we would definitely like to have back, was the quote from Mike Norvell. Um, I'm going to talk big picture here. We didn't see the scrimmage. Nobody in the media did unless they were sleuthful. They found a way to sneak around the stadium and get in there to watch uh, Florida State play uh, or scrimmage, I should say, yesterday. Uh, but th- th- we were locked out of this, so you just got to go by what the coach tells you. It's one of those rare times I'm so thankful, and I'm reminded of how thankful I am that Norvell's open-door policy to the press is what it is. Uh, you look around the country, many of whom are going through spring football right now as well, and they don't – they don't have that luxury. They don't get to, to get to see any of these guys. We've seen so many of these guys, and that's why we eagerly anticipated the scrimmage, but <clears throat> it kind of stinks not to be able to see it. I know Benson had a touchdown, and he was able to utilize his um, you know, his skill set, as Mike said, uh, to make a play in the open field and, and take it to the house. Um, but I want to circle back to that quote. There were definitely some throws that we'd like to have back. Um, there are indicators, again, Open book here. We didn't see it. But there are indicators this was not a great scrimmage for DJ. Uh, And I would have first guessed that. In fact, I hinted, so did you, Tom, so did Ira, I think in a conversation I had with him at some point. Um, It is perfectly normal for a defense on a veteran team with a veteran quarterback that's been there, for example. It's perfectly normal for a defense to be ahead of the offense in a first scrimmage. In fact, it's expected, and a lot of first scrimmages, frankly, are kind of ugly. They're usually a disjointed mess. It's the first time that everybody's allowed to kind of go full bore, play at full speed live, and go make plays. And defenses don't have, for lack of a better term, a restrictor plate put on them, right? And it just becomes difficult to get into any rhythm um, against a defense, which is ahead of an offense, always it's the nature of install. It's the nature of early scrimmages in football. That's true from high school all the way through to the NFL. So you could have first guessed that the offense would be behind. But now you add into the mix that you have so many faces that you're trying to incorporate into this offense, new faces, people that came from other programs or are young, people that hadn't been asked to start before. And that includes your future starting quarterback who's having to learn an entirely new offense. And yesterday is his first opportunity to run said new offense against a live defense that has no restrictions. So we can dial it up if we're Adam Fuller. We can change the looks and personnel. We can bring it. We can bring the heat. We can do all that. We can run games up front. We can do all the things we want to do. Again, I didn't see it, but this is kind of what happens in first scrimmages. And you got a new quarterback. I don't know that there are going to be too many instances, either ones that we see or are told about from this coaching staff, where DJ is going to light it up this spring. This is a whole lot to learn in a short period of time. And Mike talked about, yeah, we kind of needed this, you know, and DJ might have needed this because this is, hey, we're throwing it at you now. And in addition, by the way, Coach Norvell pointing out this is the earliest he's ever gone with a full scrimmage. That they've, in his coaching career, they have not scrimmaged after just four or five practices before. So it's really not only is it that the defense is going to be way ahead of the offense, and the quarterback's brand new learning a new offense, and you have a bunch of fresh faces trying to, you know, make, work their way into the lineup at running back and wide receiver and tied in. Um, but it's really super early to, to be scrimmaging to begin with. So 
I'll just say this. I wouldn't read too much into it. We all overreact. If, if you find if, if there's a hint that your quarterback might not have played well, we get a little nervous. I wouldn't be. And I wouldn't be if he doesn't play well at all in the spring. Now, maybe he will. Maybe maybe he'll have a day where he just lights it up and I'm wrong. And that's entirely possible. Uh, but I, I think I think it's probably more likely that he's going to have some some real moments of struggle. Uh, and it's probably good to get that on film for him to go back through and look. Because remember, now they have an extended lengthy break. Um, and so, you know, you get this, you get some days off here all in a row through Easter and into that month and all that. So I would, uh, I wouldn't read too much into it. I tend to agree. Sorry. I had the mute button. Got to hit the unmute T Lang. Um, <laughs> I think when, when coach Norvell says that mechanically he had some things break down footwork, uh, reverting back to old footwork and old mechanics, rat trapping. It's all between the ears. That's all it is. This is about assimilation into an offense. This is about unlearning parts of two different playbooks that he that he's had to run. DJU has it at two different institutions. The last two seasons, um, it, it's natural. This is a natural thing, and it sounds like we're doing damage control. No, it's just this is this is what it's supposed to be. You, the talent is there. Uh, the arm strength, everything that we thought DJ was going to be when he when he got here, he has been. Um, I just, yeah, it, this is not going to be something where you have a guy show up, plucked from the Pacific Northwest, comes down, and he's the thing that changes the program. This program is its own machine, and he's got to fit within the structure of that machine. They're not rebuilding it from the ground up because they got a one-year player. Um, and that's where Coach Norvell said, like, you know, Brock knows the system better than DJ does. He's been in it for a year. So some of the things we're asking of Brock, he he does better. Uh, but that room is going to be fun to watch for different reasons. You've got an uber veteran new to a system. You've got a second year player who was light years better in his second performance than his first performance in, in games that count. And then you've got a stud uh, in terms of the recruiting rankings who's interesting to watch. Like he's. He's not your cookie cutter quarterback as Croman Hawk. And, and he had a good day yesterday, according to Norvell. Outstanding, I think, is the word that Mike Norvell used. That is um, where I was going. Way to serve it up, T Lang. It's like we've worked together. Um, in fact, here's the quote from Mike Norvell I thought Luke was outstanding. <laughs> there you go. There's no sugarcoat, no dancing around it, everybody. I thought Luke was outstanding. Mike Norvell. All right. Well, you got me. I'll 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 take the bait. You got me. Reel me in. Look, man. Luke Romanhawk is an impressive specimen. Just on the hoof. When you look at him, you go, ooh, I like that. I mean, that is a six foot four, two hundred and twenty pound athlete. He, he's thick, he can move, got a big, big arm. So you're like, I like the clay that we're working with, right? His dad was an effing linebacker in college. So he, uh, fa- good family stock, buddy. And he's got brothers that play, and they're athletes too. And Luke himself was an athlete at one point. You know, I mean, uh, it kind of sounds like I'm disparaging him when I say at one point meaning he was required to use more athleticism at other positions before he became a singular quarterback is what I'm saying. So uh, as somebody who, you know, didn't play quarterback and respects the hell out of the athleticism that it takes at the other positions, I'm prone to take shots at QBs, which is foolish because Jordan Travis is a freak of an athlete and so is half the NFL. So, you know, I'm being a fool, but it's just kind of funny. I I think this is uh, the Eli Manning stuff, you know, like the beach photos of Eli Manning. You're like, that dude won two Super Bowls? You got to be freaking kidding me. That guy? Yeah, yeah. But this – He's an interesting player. Uh, you know, this is He's where he's got we- a weird delivery, Tom, and it's gonna it takes you back a little bit. I'm glad you. So it's funny. I'm gonna tell this story. Sorry, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this story because I like watching you lay eyes on this team for the first time the other day. You know, I've been at all these practices, and so I've had time to digest what I think day over day with certain players. So your initial impression, you only get one first impression. So that first day you're out there, you look at a guy, you're like, huh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that guy. I, I just, uh, 
and I don't mean Chrome and Hawk and you. I'm just talking about generally speaking, when we go out there, you're kind of like, yeah, well, I don't, I, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know about that wow. guy. Other people you look at, you go, oh, wow. Okay. All right. Like the way you looked at Marvin Jones Jr. The very mm-hmm. first day you were out there and you went, oh, sweet Jesus. I'm watching you watch him. I'm getting your first impression of him. And you're turning to me after a few minutes going, well, that that is uh, yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's going to play. Right. That's a big, strong man. We're going to be all right. And he moves and he's got that stock. Right. OK, then. Other guys, you're like, I'm going to jot a few notes here. I don't know what to make of this dude. He's intriguing physically. And he's had a good rep and followed by a couple bad reps, followed by another good rep. I don't, we'll see. I need to see more. There's a whole lot of I need to see more moments when you watch some of these guys because it's so early in camp and it's your first impression. Chrome and Hawk, I think the first impression you had is the first impression I had, which is the first impression a lot of people had. Really good looking athlete. I mean, really put together for a freshman. You're like, wow, he's big enough. We said the same thing about Brock Glenn when we saw him, right? He's big enough and strong enough, thick enough, that if he had to play, you could handle – you don't see him getting broken in half. You're like, okay, okay, he could play if he had to play in college. Yeah, that's that's something that uh, Chubba Purdy did not have. Like, you you looked at him and said, man, he's got to hit the weight room. You know, I I guess. Like, that was was, my takeaway was, I guess, all right. 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 There, there is no guessing with Brock, and then there's certainly no guessing with Crow and Hog. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Makes right. sense. So yeah. Big, strong dude fits the part. Now, here's what's weird. He's got a funky delivery. Yeah. And so when you see that delivery for the first time, you kind of go, I don't know. They're going to have to uh, – something. They're, they're going to have to do something. It feels like a windup. <laughs> but here's the problem, Tom. It's a cannon. Yeah. When he does let it go, he lets it go. And he's able to make up for those unnecessary motion mistakes in the delivery with the speed in the re- the release, right? The quickness, the way he spins the football. I mean, it's it's coming out now. It's coming out hot. So I'm sure it's first camp. They'll button it up. We love Tony Tokars. We think he's a very good quarterback coach. He's already proven to be a good quarterback coach. Mm. He'll work with him. He'll reel that in. But do you have the meat and potatoes? Do you have the stuff you need for a meal? Are we going to be all right? You do. And he's a football player. I just, listen, think about it. Georgia made a push for him late in the process. This is a kid, big time schools wanted. We got him. We were able to shield everybody away. It's cool to hear Mike in scrimmage number one in his first ever camp say that I thought Luke was outstanding. It might have been only two series, seemingly late in the scrimmage, but buddy, that's, can you imagine how your head would be swimming coming from high school and your first camp and now you're in a scrimmage and it's live. And I mean, that's, that says a lot. It, it does. And and they said, you know, Norvell said that they asked him to move the ball. You know, it's like they put him in some tough spots where he had to move the ball. So my guess is bad field position. Good luck kid. And then he can, and then he did something with it. Um, it, it is an awkward, you know what, what it reminds me of actually the throw. Cause I walked over to you guys I said, does he always drop down three quarter like that? And, and <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of Jameis throwing on the run. You know, Jameis had a weird kind of hitch as he as he ran. My theory on Jameis and the pros was they tried to refine that throwing motion that he didn't feel anymore. He was he was trying to be a robot, especially from the pocket, because he was so worried about it's like pop time for a catcher. Mm-hmm. He's so worried about how quickly you have to release the ball that I think he got mechanical. But when he would break the pocket, I mean, that was your ass. Like He would revert 30, back to being the athlete that he was, and he would dominate. He would see it, and he would hit it. Like, that was, even in the 30 interception year, if he broke the pocket, there was no trouble was coming. Like, there, there wasn't an interception coming. He had a 500-yard day against the Rams. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And yeah. and that's kind of what this reminds me of, this throwing motion. It, But he sees it, and he hits it. Now, Again, I don't watch a ton of skill, so I was catching 11 on 11 drills. I'm not watching those one on ones. I'm not watching the seven on sevens in the day that I had. So it's an incomplete thing for sure. And I look forward to coming back a couple of weeks and seeing Chroma Hawk again. But yeah, I mean, you you understand why there was elite 11 praise for him, 
you understand why there was late momentum for Georgia in their own minds, and he said no. But then I also kind of understand why he could do some things early on. He's been committed to us for like two years, and I'm sure they threw the playbook at him in that period of time. So he's coming to campus not as an 11th hour signee at a high school. It's somebody that they've worked with and they've tried to craft even before he got on campus. I want to point out, and we still got plenty of time in the show in another segment this hour. We got to take a break here in a second. Um, I love, uh, maybe it is just um, a bias that you want, your confirmation bias, but didn't it make you feel good that he cited Marvin Jones as having a good day? Didn't it make you feel good that uh, he cited McCoy, the kid we like as a freshman wide receiver, as having a good day? Um, you know, did it make you feel good? There's some guys that are younger that you feel like they could maybe play and help you right now. Uh, Landon Thomas got cited. It's having a pretty good day. So there's some really young guys that you already looked at, just like I have, and said, I might play right now. Well, Landon Thomas skill set fits the offense to a T. You know, like they're going to have to figure out how DJU to return to the original point, fits in the offense. Like that's – this is a give and take of what are his strengths. Maybe we've got to put a couple pages of our playbook away for this year because he's he can do other things well. But that's a this is what spring is about. they got to find out what he can do, what he can't do. Landon Thomas fits everything about this offense. The yeah. versatility they want from tight ends and the H-back, um, the ability to block in space, the ability to be a pass catcher in a matchup nightmare. Like the body type is there. The willingness to do those things that they want to do with their H backs is there that I expected to hear. And I continue to expect to hear good things from him. And then watch Marvin Jones. You know, I'm not worried about lack of production of Georgia. I I don't want to say completely that I've seen enough, but I've seen the tools. Like it it won't be it's not like he's a giant, but he can't move. You know, he's not agile enough or he's not quick enough or he doesn't have enough polish. Man, he's got everything it takes. I think from here, it's just about consistency, and and we'll see. But there's a reason he was a five-star, and this is not one of those pro- – he's not a project. He looks more like a finished product than a project to me. I got a theory on him, and I'll tell you about it here in a second. And I'll also touch on some other players uh, and what Coach had to say after the scrimmage. Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We have partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpa's, the food is always good. I mean, mm-hmm. everything on the menu. Mm-hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that the, what, what is the pork? The bungalow chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bungalow chungla. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you. What is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road. And north side of the so I said a moment ago I have a theory on Marvin Jones Jr., and he was the recruit that I was most devastated by that we didn't get. You guys know from listening to the Jeff Cameron Show for the last 26 years, 27 years, that Marvin Jones – I know, shake your head, right, Tom? Um, imagine when we hit the 30-year mark. Uh, so anyhow. Marvin Jones Jr., uh, well, go, Marvin Jones, my favorite player of all time, I'll reiterate, and really that's probably, it's not quite true about the pros because I'm a Leroy Selman guy, which he's right over he's right over my shoulder there. There's Leroy Selman. Anyhow, um, yeah, but he, Marvin is high on the list. 
And I just, I typically, you see it in Major League Baseball, you see it in the NBA, you certainly see it in the NFL. If there is a junior <laughs> and, and the dad was a badass, there's a real good chance that the son is a badass. This is how it works, man. We get how it works in genetics, right? With genetics. Uh, they're not always the same caliber, obviously, and they're not the same person, but they've got a head start. Um, you know, King Griffey Jr. swung the bat, not dissimilar at a young age, to Ken Griffey Sr., and then he surpassed him. But you see this with, with the offspring of elite professional athletes. They tend to have some built-in advantages. Um, some of it is the physical tools, right? Like, so they'll have the requisite, hey, listen, I can practice every day if I'd like to, but I'm not going to be six foot five. I'm not going to be six foot six. I'm not going to be six foot eight as a power forward, right? If I'm six feet tall, I can have the same skill set as my dad who played in the NBA for 10 years. My dad did not, but I'm not going to be able to get there if I don't have the same height or anywhere close to it, right? So when you lay eyes on Marvin, you're like, oh, he's taller than his dad. He's longer than his dad. He's, and he's got the trunk of his dad. So there's real potential for him to be awesome, right? Just awesome because he has tools that not even his dad had. Now, I'm not trying to put undue pressure on that young man to live up to what Marvin Jones was in college football is nearly impossible for anybody, but he's a different position and he's his own kid. And he's been described to me by people who know him as kind of different, as just different. And I think that's the struggle of trying to be your own person, to be something separate from your father and his legacy. And all through his recruitment, that seemed to be the case. And, of course, Florida State was down. And then he gets to Georgia as a five-star recruit with that name. Well, man, good luck. At the moment he gets to Georgia, they have the greatest defense ever assembled in college football. It's all NFL players. And so he doesn't get on the field despite these huge expectations. And people are like, hmm, you know, he looks like that and feels like he should get on the field. And then he's there another year, and he gets on the field a little bit. But not a lot, Tom. Not a lot. I mean, not to the point. So what happens? People begin to whisper. Uh, he's a little bit different. Personality is a little different. He's not really playing a lot. You know, I don't know. Maybe he's just one of these guys that, you know, will never live up to the name. Just can't do it. Uh-uh. Weird circumstances. Went to a place where it's hard to get on the field. It's perfectly normal not to get on the field at a place littered with NFL talent. He's just now coming into his own. This is going to be a win for Florida State. We're getting this guy right when he was about to take off. I can't wait to watch him play, Tom. They alluded yesterday that he had a good scrimmage. If you can get him locked in, and he's focused and he cares, I think he's going to have a big year. We are not allowed to speak to the specifics of how a player impacts a play on offense or defense. Like, for example, Malik Benson caught a touchdown. If we saw it, the nature of it, the scheme, whatever, like the, that's one thing we're prohibited from, from discussing. In the same way, like, you know, not all pancakes are the same for an offensive lineman. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are eh, circumstances. But you might say that, you know, Darius Washington put somebody on their butt in practice, but you can't describe the nature of, of right, the play. Right, right. Yeah. This is the dance that we do. His top end explosiveness and some of the things he can do at defensive end are very, very impressive. Like very, very impressive for somebody of that size. I'm not worried about the ability of Marvin Jones Jr. to make explosive plays. He can. I already know it. I've seen it. In one day of practice, I'm like, yep. Well, he's got what it takes, but the motor consistency, um, yeah. IQ, how you hold up against the run, like those details are are to be fleshed out. But about raw ability, he wasn't a five star because he was a combine player and he had to, to learn how to play football. Like he's got moves, he's got what he needs. It's just now, how does he fit into the scheme? How does he, 
take to the responsibilities, because there are many responsibilities that position has in our defensive scheme. Details. What are the details like? I'm I'm excited to see what happens in that department because yep. raw skill. Oh man, yep, that'll do. papucci has got a lot to work with there, man. He's got to be excited. Get him going. Get him going. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio or Chant TV. Carmel Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. Social Kitchen is now open on Cary Forest Parkway near Ology Northside, Tallahassee's only premier market where you can receive the famed Snake River Farm steaks and premier meats. Social Kitchen also has chef-prepared meals and sides ready to serve in just under 20 minutes, perfect for those very busy springtime weeks, weekends, you name it, hosting some people at the house. Hey, Social Kitchen also has build-your-own charcuterie boards and catering. Stop in and visit Social Kitchen today or visit us online at socialkitchentlh.com. Social Kitchen, TLH.com. Your heating and air conditioning system doesn't check with you before it takes a break. That's why we're always ready to help any day, anytime, anywhere. And with our annual service agreement, there are no overtime charges ever. At Verno Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Verino Heating and Air Conditioning. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, call Select Quote at 1 800 452 5050. That's 1 800 452 5050. Or go to SelectQuote.com. 1 800 452 5050. That's 1 800 452 5050. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Join Macy's and Girls, Inc. now during Women's History Month and help empower young women and girls. Throughout March, you can round up your in-store purchase to the nearest dollar or donate online to help us support Girls, Inc. Since 2020, we've raised over $5.7 million to prepare 220,000 Girls, Inc. participants to pursue their dreams. Give back today, shop women-owned brands, and find out how we're creating brighter futures for all at Macy's.com slash purpose. Hey, Mark, remember, getting help from Progressive is so easy. You can use the mobile app, chat with us online, or call us. And you pick now to tell me. I couldn't miss little Grace's ballet recital. Oh, thanks for inviting me, by the way. Did I? Because you know I'm always here for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can use the mobile app if I need help. Sorry, you're in my wife's seat, though. Oh, yeah, I gotta go anyway. <laughs> tell Grace she nailed her chasse. Get the help you need from Progressive with her mobile app, online chat, or over the phone. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Not available in all states. 
Ready for a breath of fresh air this tax season? Well, breathe easy with e and Heating and Air. Don't miss out on federal tax incentives for new AC systems and heat pumps. Take advantage of up to $2,000 in tax credits, plus additional savings from city and manufacturer rebates. e and Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Tallahassee and surrounding areas since 1974. Call us today for your free estimate at 850-575-9119 or visit us online at e and Air.com. That's e and Air.com. The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Treywick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales, and so much more. With 24-7 emergency service and repair, Weston Treywick will be your calm in the storm. Give them a call at 514-0003. Weston Treywick, professional electrical services day or night. Visit online at westontrewick.com. Have you been injured on Interstate 10? I'm Jimmy Fasig of Fasig Brooks Law Offices. We've partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic cameras along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Let us help you get the proof you need to stand up for yourself and get fair compensation for your injuries. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Fasig Brooks, 850-777-7777, offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff. Hour number two, the Jeff Cameron Show, Libations Friday. Good to have you along. Appreciate you joining us. I'm Jeff. That's Tom. There's Director. We're all here. What a nice day. What a good day. What a good day for Florida State baseball. Yesterday, they get the win. Bullpen sures things up. Eight to three, get the grand slam from Dengis. Upsets in the Sweet 16. Goodbye, North Carolina, just like that. Goodbye, Arizona. Huh? How about that? Poor Bill had a little action on Arizona yesterday. Didn't work out for him. I believe your parlay was shot to hell. Did only my Pirates come through for you? You're muted. <laughs> I don't like not having my control. Like I, I've got, yeah. you know, my studio. I've just got the, you got the roadcaster. You got the button. You just got yeah. the button. It's, it's clicking. It's for the birds. Um, no, the Reds came through for me. Uh, you guys came through for me. The Rays did not, and the no, they Orioles got did. So it was Tampa. It was, it was, yeah. They got. <laughs> well, I live, I live hammered the four team parlay when the Rays were up one nothing. And I was like, all right, well, we'll take a shot with this. And then yeah, didn't go well from there. But the other three legs, I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but I had a four-leg parlay, and only one of them failed me. The other, oh. if, you know, if that yeah. one came through, it's I would have won the never happens that way, Tom, never. You know, this is why Vegas hates it. You know, I mean, most of the time you hit on all four legs. <laughs> oh, man. Our thanks to our friends at Zaxby's. Delicious Zaxby's. Tom had some yesterday. And he was elated. I will have some over the weekend, and I will be elated because I'm going to get the platters. And then you guys will all stop at one of the 53 Zaxby's here in Tallahassee. Remarkable that there are that many. A lot of options, a lot of places around town. When you're outside with this beautiful weather, you say, you know, I'm a little hungry. And the fine folks at Zaxby's have been supporting Florida State Athletics as a Golden Chief booster for over 19 years Why don't I support Zaxby's? I get delicious food, and I help support Florida State just as they do. It's a no-lose situation. Stop by your neighborhood Zaxby's, one of 53, 54, I think it is. I can't remember which, uh, in the neighborhood here in Tallahassee. So enjoy. And get the Texas toast. It's the weekend, damn it. Get the Texas toast. Dip it in the sauce. Do it. 
I really think that Danny should set up a Zaxby's in the giant hole that is the alumni side of, of Doe Campbell Stadium just for the just construction giant workers. Zaxby's? Yeah. Yeah, but just a temp a temporary Zaxby's construction workers when they when they do a scrimmage or a practice from there. There's enough space. There, it's cavernous over there, and I, I'll bet you Zaxby's with the contracts that they have around town. I mean, I, there's one being built outside a Hotel Indigo today. I'm sure of it. I just need to look outside the window and see it. I want to read a quote. Uh, I thought DJ Lundy looked the way we needed him to look. He was flying all over the field. Uh, it's a fun group to see compete right now because they are talented. They have ability. They can run. That group has been one of the pleasant surprises for me throughout these early practices. There are some struggles. The progression is probably a little further ahead than I expected, though. That is from Norvell talking about the linebackers. Interesting. Um, Lundy is largely very good against the run, not good against the pass. If he takes a step forward this year in coverage, that could be a critical aspect of something that maybe didn't get overlooked, but was kind of brushed over because of all the other names that came into Florida State. So if he's going to have a big camp and he's going to be a more consistent player, really what I'm looking for him is much more consistency. DJ Lundy will blow up a play now. Just ask LSU. DJ Lundy will make a play for you. And whenever that happens, my Twitter feed goes nuts. People, hey, what do you think, Jeff? Because I've been so hard on the linebackers. It's not about the fact that they're completely devoid of talent. I've never walked in and said they don't have any talent. I've said that they've lacked consistency and they're not very good in coverage. I'll stand by that. They haven't been great in coverage. They're good against the run. They've been good against the run. DJ Lundy has been especially good against the run because he's built like a Mack truck. And that is a run fit Jesse if he guesses right, if he diagnoses correctly. He also sometimes ends up in the wrong hole. So can he get better in coverage and can he be more consistent diagnosing plays? Good sign that he had a good day yesterday. It also probably means that Murphy's coming along the way that they wanted him to if he's saying that he's more impressed by that group than he thought he would be. And Cryer is a guy that I think has a chance to make a real impact this this season. Cryer could be a real key to that linebacker unit. I'll probably take some liberties here in reading you know, between the lines. I think Cryer has been part of what Mike Norvell is describing. I think the freshmen have been part of what Mike Norvell is describing as surprised with what the group is doing now the context clues of, of what he said yesterday they they guessed wrong or, or their eye discipline was poor in several places at, at several points of, of the scrimmage because he said the defensive front played well but we caught we got caught a few times so it ain't the front that's in the wrong place i think the secondary played okay so maybe safety and linebacker eye discipline wise didn't execute to the level that that mike norvell wanted and that tracks with with what I saw out of one day. Now, again, it's early. This is also a scheme you've got to learn if you're um, a Sean Murphy or a freshman. Right. Uh, you, got, you got to learn it from scratch, your responsibilities, all that kind of stuff. And now you've got the added element of the, of the helmet communication if you're going to be that linebacker who's in charge of things from, you know, relaying things from the sideline. So there's a lot going on. It's still a question mark. I, I, I think the surprise is coming from Cryer and is coming from the freshman. I think Murphy is still getting up to speed, and we'll see what he is, but, but we'll find out. It's just I'm hoping that Murphy is a solution there. He's he's learning. I think he's still thinking his way through some stuff. Yeah, I, I think so, and that's to be expected, as we said earlier, about DJ on the offensive side or anybody else, for that matter, in their first ever scrimmage. So I, I think you're right. Um, we'll, I, I'll be watching that group closely because I don't know if you saw Bill Conley's uh, write up on defenses in college football this year. Uh, but he, this week he came out with, uh, SP plus rankings, uh, uh, on the defense. Well, it really wasn't an SP plus rankings as much as it was. Let's look at the groups that have come the longest way and been the most consistent. And Adam Fuller, Fuller got a nice uh, shout out in that article, uh, when he cited that in a very short period of time, this is a defense that, and I, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember the specific numbers right now, and I don't have it in front of me, but it was something like 98th to 66 to 43rd to 19th. You know, it's like it's like boom, 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 right? We've watched the growth. And he was pointing out, the crooks of what he was pointing out was, yeah, a lot of people around college football think that Florida State's going to take a pretty big step back. 
because of what they lost. We all watched Braden Fisk at the Combine, and we realized what a wonderful player he is, and we know he's no longer playing there, and we know that – and he just went to Jared Verse, is going to get drafted. Many people think certainly in the first round. So all of a sudden you've lost a first round defensive end. If you look at the sheer number of snaps that you lost at linebacker, I mean, my goodness gracious, Tatum Bethune uh, in Deloach, I mean, those guys played a gazillion snaps of Florida State football. And so you lose that experience. And, you know, one of those guys is going to get drafted. Uh, the other's got a shot to make it as a free agent or something like that. So, I mean, that's a high caliber player players that you're losing there. Uh, you know, so it, it's fascinating to talk about some of the secondary as well. His point was that, well, they've also kind of filled a lot of holes and have a lot of dudes that have been in the system that played a lot, that played a ton, that have a chance to just take a step up, and they're not asking them to make a massive leap. And, and, and if you're projecting, can they sustain where they're at or even improve on defense from a year ago? You'd be hard pressed to improve upon what that defense was in the final five weeks of the season. I mean, that was really specifically the final three weeks of the season. If you look at this Florida State defense, sweet Jesus, you can make a case it was the best defense in the country at the end of the year. So are they going to be that? No. Do they have to be? I don't think so. I think the biggest talking point for me, and I'm going to repeat it, I'm a broken record, is I think the offense is going to be better than the offense a year ago. I think they have more weapons, more opportunities. I think there's some things about what DJ brings that better suits our offense with the personnel that we have than Jordan Travis did. Sorry, I just do. And I, as much as I love Jordan's story and root for Jordan and think he did a lot of great things, I think there were some limitations to his game that DJ now brings to the table uh, as being able to do, as being able to get the ball down the field and big, 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 big NFL arm, 6'5", can read defenses and see it a little bit easier. Um, and I also think that they've given him added weapons that Jordan didn't have. You know, that's not Jordan's fault. Jordan didn't have that. I mean, we had guys, we thought we were set up, but, you know, this wasn't a ton of speed at wide receiver a year ago. Now you got a ton of speed. So I think the offense will be better. And I think the defense will be as good or something close to it because they continue to add talent and they've got guys for days in the secondary. You've got experience at both corners. Great experience, by the way. Cypress coming back is kind of surprising. We would not have thought that before the year began. Now you got a kid who's played a ton of football. By the way, it's the best he's ever looked. He's in shape. He wants to get paid. Zaria Thomas has been good every day he's been at Florida State. Now he's a starter. Now he is a rock-solid player. He, too, wants to get paid. You've got behind those players a ton of experience and a lot of talent. And, of course, Shaheen Brown has been here forever, too, and he's big and strong and plays the safety position great. I think in a world where the game is built around throwing the football, you're equipped – to shut down the passing game. So I think they're going to be good on defense. I think it's a good team. Yeah, I think it starts in the trenches, and we'll see what the offensive line looks like, what it, what it's comprised of. I know they've got a lot of pieces that are that are large and agile. I think they're going to be better, I think. I was convinced they would be last year, and I was wrong. So that's why I'll put a bookmark in that, and we'll see. This defensive line is good. I think you're you're one more defensive interior player, and that could be Correct. an emerging option, like a KJ Sampson, or it could be from the market. I think you're one away from being pretty close to as deep this year as you were last year. And that's saying something, because that group last year was really gifted in, in different ways. But Daryl Jackson was the player of the practice I saw, and it sounds like that's what Daryl Jackson just is these days. One of the top uh, players. You can't block the- him if he cares. Look at his body. Look at what he's done. Look at the focus. Look at the maturity from Daryl Jackson out of nowhere. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, come on. Let's just say Daryl Jackson not noted for maturity at any stop along the way so far in his career. If this is a young man that has grown up right before our eyes, I'm talking about the maturity between the years and figured it out. The light bulb has gone off. Well, there's never been a question about the physical tools. So if that's the case, look out. Well, and then they get Farmer back, you know, in, in fall camp. He's huge. In the last two years, his body has exploded. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, he's a member. He's not just huge. He's, and I know what you're saying, but he's also pound for pound one of the strongest guys. 
Oh, yeah, I'm not team. saying he, yeah, I'm not saying he's overweight. I'm just saying, no, 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 God, no. Yeah. He, he's yeah. a different looking human than he was two years ago. So but with I'm those two, 60 pounds, they're just they're very, very large up front. And and I, that's going to win you a lot of football games or put you in position to make a lot of plays. Uh, it, it's about explosiveness at defensive end. I know we just got done talking about Marvin Jones. He has the ability to be explosive, like, you know, well, period. Is a star. And then Peyton, man, one of my favorite plays the other day, I think I brought it up on the air, but the Jalen Lucas big play. Um, he made two, but the one big play when they're going 11 on 11, the distance of the field, Patrick Peyton pursues from the other half of the field. Like, you know, I, I was close to that replay board, so I could really take a look at what responsibilities there were for, for different players. And Peyton must have been 30 yards away from where the ball was going to Lucas. And he hustles his ass off to get to the other side of the field. And that is not atypical of Patrick Peyton. High motor, made a couple of plays in the LSU game that it's not his responsibility. But he understands. He's got, he, he understands what, what offenses are trying to do. Man, if you have another player or two like Peyton in terms of motor and maturity, and it looks like Daryl Jackson could be, they're going to set the tone up front. And then from there, it's about communication at the safety level without Akeem Dent and how good the linebackers are. But they've got, they do have a chance to, to be sneaky good on defense because they've got a lot of large bodies up front of the defensive line. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling people these days that ask me from out of town, my father included in that mix, um, welcome to the party. Welcome back to the days of Florida State reloading. Welcome back to the days of Florida State being consistently excellent and the conversations are not about, can you win the conference? The conversations are not about, hey, can they win nine games? The conversations are, they're really good. I don't know if they're national championship good yet. That's a different conversation. It's a very, very different conversation. It's um, it's happened so fast that it's hard to wrap your mind around. Yeah, well, and the playoff this year, they're playoff caliber because there's 12. They're going to the 12. playoff, Tom. That team's going to the playoff. Ooh. Ooh, That's not what I'm. I'm not worried about that. They're going to the playoff. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I think they're going to the playoff. But 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 I look at Florida State. I'm getting back to looking at Florida State in the manner that we used to look at Florida State. Can you win a national championship? That's a different set of criteria. That's a different way of judging a football team. And I, that's where we're at. I I. I I don't know. We've got a lot to watch. I don't, we'll see if the quarterback's good enough. I don't know. Maybe um, let's see if we're better at linebacker than I think we are coming into the camp. Let's see if uh, some guys emerge. I know we have weapons for days. I agree with you. I think the offensive line is going to be better. I don't see why they won't be really, really good. So, um, you know, there's some big question marks, but I, I think this team can make the playoffs. I, you know, I say they're going to the playoffs. I, I, I would bet more likely that they're going to the playoff than not. Let's put it that way. That's probably a better way of saying it. Well, yeah, again, because there's so many spots at the table, uh, there's 12. And and to me, I'm looking for concerns. Linebackers there, they're only four practices into spring. This isn't like they don't have answers. They can develop and there's time. Linebacker is a place that's not breaking news. Um, but just watching the, the one practice I did, we'll see. We'll see what they got there. A little bit more depth in the defensive line would be good, and maybe that's why they're looking at Tommy Wadur Ajaye to play interior as well. And and they see that there might be a need there, but I mean there aren't grave concerns. That's the thing is there are some places where you're going to need some solutions to develop, but there's no Achilles heel where you're saying, well, I hope other teams don't figure out this, you know, glaring weakness about Florida State. And that's what gets fun. And, and on offense, too, you're going to have to find out who your guys are down in, down out. At like receiver, you got options, but who are your guys going to be that you can count on? Yeah. That's the journey we're going on. But it's very different to say that than to say, if everything bounces right, they can win 11 games. Like that. No, nah, man, it, they, their baseline that's, that's is pretty really, high. Yeah, good point. And it's really what I'm trying to express. I, I think it's easy, and I probably sometimes get overzealous, and, it, and you can parse words, and you know, you might think if you're listening from afar, man, Cameron thinks they're a juggernaut. I think they're really, really good. I think they're one of the better, you know, they're a top 15 program in the country. Uh, I think they're going to be that year over year. I think that highly of this head coach, uh, his ability to tap the portal and, and fill spots of need, as well as getting better now in the high school recruiting ranks. I just think Florida State is one of the programs now that has entered the conversation. 
the way Ohio State is every year, the way Georgia is every year, the way Alabama has been every year. Now, can you get to that level where you're a national championship contender every year? That's what those programs are. They're national championship contenders every year, not just playoff contenders, not just conference contenders. Florida State is now an annual conference champion contender. I mean, we almost expect that, that it's them. It's us or Clemson. That's, that's all there is. It's us or Clemson, period. Um, and we're now there. Two years ago, we were not there. We are now there. Well, if you're a conference champion contender, then you're a playoff contender, period, period. Um, and Florida State is that. They are going to be an annual playoff contender. And I think pretty soon, if they continue down this path, they'll be um, they'll graduate from an annual playoff contender to an annual national championship contender. And that's where we're trying to get to. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we got to take a quick break. Jeff Cameron, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Java, brew, go-go beans, brain water, liquid lightning, wakey, wakey juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not grassroots coffee. At grassrootscoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants and towns. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options, making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotSpring.com. That's TallahasseeHotSpring.com. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. (laughs) At M&L Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At M&L Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name M&L Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393 or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. M&L Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. Indulge in the authentic Korean way of grilling right at your table at the all-new Chow One Korean Steakhouse in Tallahassee. All you can eat succulent beef, chicken, pork, and an amazing selection of fresh vegetables and homemade sauces crafted with all natural ingredients in a luxurious upscale dining environment. Chow One Korean Steakhouse. Experience the ultimate fusion of flavor and fun in Tallahassee. Enjoy happy hour from 4 to 7 daily. Located at 1107 Appalachian Parkway, just east of the Capitol Building. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. That's uh, one of my favorite segments. We get to uh, get into the red zone here. And one of the reasons I like it is, uh, A, I love uh, the people we work with. I'm talking about artists and financial strategies. Um, and I and and I just was texting with uh, Adam this morning. We were talking about baseball. He's a big baseball guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, also, I never know what you're going to ask me when we do this segment. We do not rehearse this. Uh, we have certain parameters, obviously. It's a fixed position. Um, but I never ask Tom what he's going to ask me. So I, I, I find it fun. The off season ones are in weird ways, more fun than the in season ones, Tom, because I have a pretty good guess of what you're going to ask me when it's first down, second down, third down, fourth down, when we do that during the season, but I don't in the off season where sometimes it's one question, sometimes it's three, sometimes it spurs many different directions for the show. Uh, I want to point out to folks, you've heard me talk about, uh, artists and financial strategies in the past. And we talk about the retirement red zone and those things. Like if you're my age, you, you have to be thinking about these things. But really, if you're younger, if you're a younger part of the demo, if you're 35, 36, 37, whatever it might be there, you firmly establish yourself now in the working world. You've been able to put a little bit of money away. You want to get out in front of this thing. You don't want to be fretting. You want to get to be my age and be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, no, you want a game plan. And uh, Adam and his team, at Artisan Financial Strategies uh, are the people that I'm recommending. And I'm doing this because I believe in Adam and I believe in who he is and his knowledge. And I believe in the work that they do. Um, there's a lot of things I can tell you about, about planning ahead, protecting yourself from rising healthcare costs. You want all that planning experience that they have at Artisan uh, to be working in your favor. Uh, I'd like you to just reach out to them, go to noretirement.com. Many of my listeners already have. Uh, noelretirement.com. He's one of us. He's uh, he's one of the good guys. He is a Noel, but he is sharp in the world of financial strategies. And that's um, that's what you want here. So noelretirement.com. Go check it out. Let's fire it up. Tommy, what do we got? Welcome to the majesty. Every freaking rep. The elegance. To win the game. Oh, he the upright. It's no good. You have entered. Someone burned Lives will be changed. Sideline! Touchdown! Unbelievable! Mothers will cry. When you see your players give all that they have and uh, and you lose that way, it's tough. Legacies are etched into eternity. I know who I am. Oh, South Dakota was his brother from West Virginia. This is the Red Zone. That's good to know. Saw Jimbo around town again this week. Yeah, he's uh, it, th- that's good to know. Always gets me, man. Just that that moment with Rosillo. Rosillo's like, I've got you, I've got you, and Jimbo's like, No, it's good to, it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. No, you don't have me. No, <laughs> you think you have this thing going? It's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was comical. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's one simple question uh, this week. It's almost like a, an essay question that, that uh, I remember this from like AP US history. They call these DBQs like the document based questions. And the basis was always to what extent, like to what extent. Da, 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 da. Yes. Yes. I remember those. So to what extent has your opinion on the 2024 season changed after watching four practices? You can go any which way you want with that. But your confidence level, we've discussed that a little bit in the previous segment, but you, you've seen them now with your own eyes. To what extent has going to practices, seeing this group early in a camp, changed or influenced your your standing on on what they could do this fall? Uh, not at all. 
I remain as optimistic as I already was prior to camp. Uh, no, I, no changes, not even a position group, nothing. No changes. I, listen, I'm not Nostradamus, but <laughs> I predicted before camp that we were going to be impressed by the newcomers. It didn't take a Mensa to project that kids that were recruited to Alabama would come in here and look impressive like they could fill the role that they're being asked to fill. You know, I, you bring in an Alabama running back, I'm not surprised. He looks like he's a really good running back. <laughs> you bring in an Alabama wide receiver, I'm not surprised. He looks like he could be a really good receiver. You bring in an LSU wide receiver, I'm not surprised that he looks really fast, athletic, and like he might be a really good college football player. You bring it, like, you get where I'm going. I'm just not shocked by any of this and we already knew that they had I mean Daryl Jackson and Josh Farmer were coming back we knew this yeah. once we found that out I felt really good about our interior of the defensive line I still do I suspected that Marvin Jones Jr. might look like he's got some what for to him given who his dad was given that he was a five-star and given that he was recruited to Georgia just seems to me that he would probably look like a guy that could come in here and play, and he does, and so on, and so on, and so on. Earl Little Jr., which right now, not in contact, but doing covering drills and that ilk, he's wearing the green jersey. He can fly. He looks like he's going to be a good football player for us and a candidate to be that nickel corner, right? I, I, it just Your veterans that you knew were coming back, that you were excited about, uh, Azaria Thomas, for example, looks like a guy who's poised to have a great year. Uh, Patrick Payton, who you knew needed to put on a little bit of size, but his trajectory was that of being an all-conference player and maybe an all-American. Perhaps a top two-round draft pick. That's what we thought in our head is the direction he's going. He's long. He's athletic. Old batted balls. Payton ain't having that nonsense. Now that he's gotten bigger, he can play the run better. He's still quick off the ball. There's just no reason to believe that Florida State won't be a very, very, very good football team. And that's how I still feel. I think there's work to do. I think that DJ's got a long way to go in getting acclimated to the offense. But the physical tools are all there. He's very mature. He's a hard worker. He's dedicated himself to the task. So why would we be worried? I'm not worried. I believe in... Coach Norvell. I believe in Tony Tokar as the quarterback coach. Um, so they're going to get him ready. He's not ready right now, but they're going to get him ready. And I Brock Glenn's going to attend. You know, that's one guy we haven't talked about today. He had a good day yesterday. And I'm not surprised. Brock Glenn showed tools and abilities a year ago, including in that ass kicking against Georgia, that suggested he was going to be a really good player for us. I think he will be. I think he's going to continue to push DJ. And, and, and Luke will push Brock. So we're going to be in a position where that quarterback room has been transformed, where you've got three legitimate players at the most important position fighting for time. This is good. This is a really good situation. I have questions that I had before camp, but they haven't changed. The question mark about who's going to block as an inline tight end. We really don't have the requisite size and strength there. Still have that concern. That's not going to change. It's one of my concerns. Do you have enough depth of talent at linebacker? Is it skilled enough? Still one of my concerns. Maybe less of a concern than I had going into camp. That might be one area where I'm feeling a little bit better, but it's still a concern. I think that's probably an area of weakness on this team, and it still remains to be true. Haven't seen enough so far on the offensive line to think that their world's better than they were a year ago, but I haven't seen anything that makes me think they're worse. So, yeah, man, I, I just I assume they would be loaded at running back. They're loaded at running back. I assume that they'd be good on special teams. They're going to be good on special teams. Nothing's really changed for me. I think for me, um, you know, one player that stood out, and it might just be because of the aptitude last year, the necessity of him being good. It looks like Darius might have taken another step. It's one practice that I've seen Darius Washington. But, I mean, clearly he profiles a tackle for Florida State. You know, we, last year it was where does he play? This year, it's, well, he's going to be one of your tackles. You don't move Julian Armella inside 
and you don't have a situation like Robert Scott, you know, not being available for spring. And we all knew that that would have been a question mark anyway, just because of recent history. But you don't make a move and take a guy who could profile as a tackle and move him in <clears throat> unless you're counting on buyers to be good, unless you're really counting on Darius Washington to be your anchor. There's a little bit of snarl in his game on Tuesday that I found very nice to see. It's not that Darius isn't mean, um, but there was a couple of reps in, in one-on-ones where I took note that, oh, man, okay, he's not here messing around. Uh, it's little things like that, that that have, you know, when you go see practice, it's little developments like that with players that stand out to me. The overall talent level of this team is good. This is the first time I walked out of practice, though, I think I, I briefly talked about this earlier where I usually have a phone call <clears throat> back home and, and I'm saying they're better. They're always better. This is the first time I'm not sure that this team is better than its predecessor, but they're, they're larger. They're, they, they're more grown up and they're deeper. So we'll see, we'll see what they become, but this, this group is able to handle attrition in a way last year's wasn't this is they've got, they've got waves of dudes at more positions. Well, and I think um, last year's team was unlucky. And I'm just going to project they won't be as unlucky this year. And you think about what that means. I'm describing last year's team as incredibly unlucky in a lot of facets, in a lot of ways. And they went 13-0. and If this team is more fortunate, less subject to dumb luck, a bad one at that, I think they can be better. And the schedule's tougher. So I think we have to take a look at the fact that, uh, oddly, there's some games on this schedule that I didn't suspect at the time a couple of years ago or even a year ago that I looked ahead that I didn't think would be tough, that I think are tougher than I would have given you know, them credit for a, a while back. Like, I think the SMU game on the road might be interesting. Mm-hmm. I think this first game against Georgia Tech is a lot more interesting than I would have projected it to be when it was announced. When it was announced, I was like, oh, get ready for a 50-point ass whoop in Ireland. You're about to watch a one-sided affair. I'm not so sure. I think Georgia Tech is going to present problems for us offensively, meaning their offense against our defense. And I think that they've done a lot. Uh, they went and got a Georgia linebacker. Uh, they, they went and got two other guys on defense from other programs that are, you know, big-time players. So I think they're going to be – wildly improved on defense. They were awful on defense a year ago. Now, that will they be elite or, or even very good on defense? I don't know. I'm not a Georgia Tech insider. We'll see. I, I'll be reading carefully their practice reports because I want to see how much better they are. But I think they're really well coached, and they're very experienced on offense. So I think that game could be kind of interesting into the third quarter. I, I think if we don't play well, and first games are always a little weird. Well, so, that, yeah, you know. I, I think that's the, that's the mark of this year where it – if you're talking about a variable, you've got so many new players, like you know, they'll, they'll polish it up with what DJ is. They'll polish it up with the receiver rotation. They'll shrink that from, you know, what they have now. Some guys are going to leave after spring, but you'll get to a place where there's a two deep that you like with starters that you, that you can count on offensive line. Same thing. I'm sticking with the offense here because that's the one that has, you need more pieces to come together to make it look fluid. Like defense, it, it's about reacting. Offense, you got to make it happen. And they'll have all these things polished up, but still the first game where DJ is in this system, the first real game, the first real game where Malik Benson's a receiver for Florida State, and you might have a two transfers starting for you at guard. You know, you could have Richie Leonard and TJ Ferguson starting for you. Like there's, there's just a whole lot of newness and a lot of guys from outside the program that when you face a team like Georgia Tech, if you're not buttoned up, yeah, you could be in a game in the second half, and it's just because of natural communication issues because you haven't been through it together. Like that is the that's the sticky part about this this early schedule for Florida State is as much work as they're about to do in spring camp and fall camp, there's still a learning curve that you cannot duplicate in practice and in camp, and they got to go through it together. It's a tough first game and it's a tough first month. Uh, that SMU game is going to be difficult, I think. Well, and I just, I think when people hear me say that and we talk about the schedule, they'll be like, wait a minute, last year, guys, we started against LSU. I mean, you, you can't get tougher than that to start a year. It's true. But I think that on balance, there are more games that fall in the category this year of, hmm, eh, you know, you, we're favored in a vacuum. I like us to win every one of them. But the way the schedule plays out, you're like, okay, you 
you could lose to Notre Dame on the road. You could you could lose to Miami on the road. You could lose at home to Clemson. You could struggle to win on the road against a really good and well-coached SMU team who's going to make that their Super Bowl. You got an elite quarterback, well, a, a very good quarterback and a very good offense in Memphis rolling into town. If you're not buttoned up there, you could have a problem. Georgia Tech and Ireland, which we just talked about, is not easy. Um, you know, I don't know what Florida is going to be this year. Their schedule's ruthless, so they may be broken by the time they play us. But Florida is—they've got athletes, and if they yeah. if they get quarterback play, it could be a problem. You know, you're on the road at Duke, and a lot's changed there. Uh, Elko's gone, quarterback's gone. You know, that shouldn't be a problem. If it were last year's Duke team on the road, I'd be like, well. Eh, it could be, a, you know, so, yeah. but I, you have a lot of those kinds of games. Now it fell the way we wanted it to fall when they scheduled it. The breaks are in the right spots. When you play certain teams fall in the right spots. Um, you can't, there's no such thing as like loving every week of the season exactly the way you wanted it, but this is pretty close. This is pretty close. Like if, if somebody gave our fans the, the teams that we have to play and said, put them in the order you want them with the breaks where you want them, you might get this schedule. <laughs> so yeah, right, it, we right. kind of got what we wanted here. Yeah. I think it, it, you might play with a bye week later, like November, but it, for the first eight, nine games of the year, it's pretty much the way it needs to be to put yourself in a position to succeed. But while that LSU game is, it's a better opponent that you're playing in week one is the Heisman trophy winning quarterback that you played yeah. in week one, the continuity, you didn't have to worry about communication, um, you didn't have to worry about star power, proven star power, comfort in the system. You had two linebackers extremely familiar with the system on defense. Your safety that's gone clearly made a difference when he was not on the field and when he was on the field in the Keem Den. He was there. Your star, Jared Verse, was there. Yeah, new guy in Braden Fisk. But in terms of new position, new responsibilities, defensive interior ain't exactly quarterback in, in terms of you know the integrating into a system on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Travis was there. I mean, well, you know, that's like, the biggest one. You had a guy who's played a gazillion snaps for you at the most important position. Right. And, and he's got the synergy with a Johnny Wilson that even if Keon, you know, Keon ends up being a star of that game, but he knows where to go with the ball with people he's trusted and played with for years. And Trey Benson the same way. So, like, it was all there. You know, that that was the, the benefit of the way that roster was constructed. It was all about retention from the battle's end. This is about sticking a landing with a whole lot of moving parts. It's not impossible. These are talented parts, but there's there's clunkiness that comes with that and should That's be true. expected to come with that. A lot of good parts. A lot of good parts. You said it. Thank you, Battles In. A lot, a lot of really good parts um, to, to kind of try to make it work. That's where we've changed who we are. Uh, it used to be a couple of years ago, you're like, oh, this guy could work out. Sure hope he doesn't get hurt. Um, no, this might work over here, but man, they're going to have to have this guy cover for this guy. Cause we don't have anybody else. And you know, like there were moments where you were, let's try to play towards this strength because if they find out about this, we're in trouble. You know, like this is, you're not doing that anymore. You know, you have answers when defenses ask questions of you. Now you're like, Oh, okay, well, we'll do this. And offensively when teams test your defense and say, well, can you do that? Oh yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We'll do that with you. You want to play rugged? You want to run, play downhill? We'll stop the run. You want to you want to throw it around a lot? Oh, buddy, I don't think you want to do that with our length and speed and depth, but go ahead. We'll do it. So, you know, there are a lot of answers to these questions, and that's why I'm talking about them differently, where the difference between preseason expectations are, are you national championship good or just playoff good? What a fun place to be. What a fun place to be where are you national championship good or playoff good? Yeah, just say that over and over again, guys. It's a lot of fun to say that over and over again. I love saying that, and that's kind of where I think we're at, and that's the good thing. By the way, this has been The Red Zone, brought to you by our friends at Artisan Financial Strategies. Uh, once again, a reminder, go uh, talk to Adam. Go to the website. Type in nolretirement.com. It'll take you to a page. It'll show you what their expertise is, uh, areas of expertise. It'll, it'll give you options and ways to communicate with them. NoRetirement.com. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leak, a law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. 
If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leak, a law firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Leak, a law firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeakAlawFirm.com. Heisen Leak, a law firm, your advocate in times of need. On scene, the driver of the box truck was transported to Tallahassee Memorial Hospital to be treated for minor injuries. The driver of the garbage truck was uninjured. For several hours, traffic was rerouted while emergency personnel worked the scene. This is Rachel and May with your Roll Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Cloudy skies expected this afternoon with thunderstorms likely. Daytime highs approaching 70 winds out of the southeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Overcast skies again tonight. Thunderstorms likely. Lows dip down to about 62. Slight chance for storms again tomorrow, 73. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, 68. Did you know metal roofs' survivability far exceeds that of traditional shingle roofs? It's time to consider a metal roof from Metal Roofing Sales of Tallahassee. We provide the best quality, least expensive material and accessories in the area, as well as material pickup and delivery. Our painted panels qualify for the City of Tallahassee's low-interest Energy Star loan program also. And don't forget about our veteran law enforcement discount. Give Metal Roofing Sales a call today at 536-9123-536-9123. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mm-hmm. mean, everything on the menu. Mm-hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The Panko Lechung, Jeff? Is that the, what, what is the pork? The Panko Lechung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the Panko Lechung. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news. In- Head on over to Power- PowerMillSports.com. Check out the website. Camps for your youngins. Baseball as well as softball. Uh, of course, you could just go there and work out and uh, and and get in some swings in the cages uh, with expert teachers. Uh, but you want a place where your kids can grow in the fundamentals, learn the game the right way, which brings out the most of their skill set, and they have more fun playing the game. I would suggest swinging by Power Mill Sports. Um, it's uh, it's it's fun. First of all, it's a cool facility. When you go in there, you're like, oh man, I, I can I, I like this, I like this. Uh, but it's also really helpful for your youngins, and they. Sponsor Probables. And Tom, what a great day yesterday was. Uh, let me remind my listeners here that uh, if you're listening on radio, you just stay right with us. You'll get to hear everything. If you're a YouTuber, you uh, you got to go somewhere else. <laughs> if you're in the Heisen Leak Law Firm chat, you got to go somewhere else, um, which is another link, right? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, you just Real Talk 93.3, realtalk93.com, and then you hit listen live. So that it's it's very simple. You find the the web feed, but we brought the music back, and yesterday Ambrosia was back in our lives, and that's a very nice that? place to be. Never uh, really in any other point in my life have I said I need some Ambrosia, but uh, when it comes to probables, I often think we need a little Ambrosia in here, guys. Can we sprinkle in some Ambrosia? Now, we can mix it up day to day. We have a set of songs, some of them even, Tom, like you haven't gone to the well in a long time to grab, so remember, you you feel free to mix it up on me, brother. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if you wanted, you know, you a little Chuck Mangione. We got a we we can go we can go out of different places. Um, yeah. This sounds like a conversation we need to have where we're just writing notes of of different 
of different ideas. Um, Yacht Rock on on like Sirius XM. I'm sure that's coming back here soon. It's usually a summer channel. You know, that's I a prob- permanent channel. Uh, if you have um, the app. Yeah, the the app. It's it just yeah. exists. Yeah, all the time. Um, we need to get yeah. There's a uh, Kenny. What's his name? We got to get Kenny. Uh, Kenny. What's his name in there a little bit. Loggins. G? Yeah, Kenny Loggins. Kenny- yeah. <laughs> Loggins. You need to get some Loggins in there. <laughs> Loggins and Mussina? Uh, yeah. From back in the day? That sounds like that could be a probable. Loggins versus Mussina. <laughs> well, the, I saw Mussina pitch several times in my uh, yeah. back in the days when he was with the Orioles before he went to the Yankees. Yeah. I remember he was my, one of those that pitched in the, the greatest game I ever saw, which of course was at F and Yankee Stadium. But he was in that game, game seven of 03. Clemens, Pedro, Mussina, Mariano yeah, Rivera. Wakefield, what what a day that was. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so for you guys, 93.3.com, 93. Real Talk 93.com, Real Talk 93.com. All right, so uh, for my radio audience, good times. Here we go, probables, cue it up. 